Hey everybody, welcome back. Mike from Spectre Comics. Today I'm going to show you my method for drawing on a tablet with Photoshop Elements. If you're new to drawing on a tablet, this video should give you some helpful tips to get started. Now in this example, I'm going to draw something relatively simple so we can run through it quickly, but complex enough to share some different ways to draw some different techniques that I use when I'm drawing on my tablet. On the screen is a list of Photoshop topics I'll cover in this video. Now stick around to the very end and I'll share some time-saving techniques that I use when I'm drawing my comics. Let's draw my character Prox, who is one of the main characters in my Spectre comics. Now I'm choosing this character again because he's relatively simple to draw. He was originally designed as part of a drone army and I needed to draw hundreds of them, thus the, the pretty simple design. I wanted it just to be very simple so I could replicate it over and over again. Now we're drawing on a Wacom Cintiq 13 HD drawing tablet in this video and I'm using Photoshop Elements 2019 as our drawing program. Even though we're using Photoshop Elements, all of the techniques I'm going to be showing you in this video should easily translate to not only Photoshop, other Photoshop programs, but to any other drawing program that is relatively similar to Photoshop. Now before we even start drawing, it's important to set up your drawing file correctly. So we're going to start with the Photoshop elements open. We're going to go to File, New File, create a blank file. We're just going to title our drawing Prox because that's what we're drawing. We're going to go ahead and change the file size to inches and we're going to just use a standard paper size, 8.5 by 11. Next thing to check is just make sure your resolution is set to 300 pixels per inch. We're going to use color mode RGB and our background we want to be transparent. Now once we set up this file, we've got a standard sheet of paper on our screen here and we're going to set up a couple of different layers for our drawing. So again, the first layer is just the background layer. We're going to call that layer one, keep that name. Layer two, we're going to change to our paper. It's going to be the background that's just white. We're going to go ahead and fill that in with the paint bucket as a white layer. That is now our paper layer. We're going to create another layer. We're going to call this sketch. And this is where we're going to do our initial sketch of the character. We're going to reduce the opacity of this layer to about 50%. And then we're going to create a fourth layer. And this is going to be our hard line layer. We're just going to call this our prox layer because that is the character we are drawing. So we now have four layers and each one is set up for our drawing. Now before we draw anything, let's talk about pens and brushes. Again, we set up our different layers in order to draw different types of things on this drawing. The sketch layer is going to serve as our quick underlay sketch at 50% opacity using the paintbrush tool. The paintbrush gives you a fuzzy line. It doesn't give you a hard pixel line. It'll give you something with a little more gradient to the line. And when you select the paintbrush tool, you can go ahead through the default brushes. Now again, I use default brushes for when I draw in Photoshop, there are brushes you can download. There are, you can actually custom make your own brushes. I tend to use just what's included in Photoshop. You can see as you scroll down this line, the further you go down, the more fuzzy the lines become. We don't want too much spread on our lines. So we're going to stick towards the top of the list. And once you do select that spread, you can actually change your pixel size with the slider here. Uh, I'm going to tend to draw with a pixel between 5 and 10. So I got a pixel size. That's around eight there. So we're going to go ahead and quickly sketch Prox on the paper. Again, this does not have to be accurate. This is just a quick sketch to get the character posed down. And once we go into the Prox hardline layer using darker lines and the pencil tool, we'll get a little more accuracy with our drawing. So let's just quickly draw this character. So that's our quick sketch and the nice thing about Photoshop is if I don't like something or something's in the wrong place I can just slide it over. I want the head to be a little more centered on the shoulder piece and we can just fix the lines. Now again we are drawing this very sketchy on our sketch layer and I can even go a little more, op uh, little, I can even lower the low opacity a little more to get the line to be very light because once we come in with our dark lines we can go ahead and draw it and see it a little better 
So our prox layer, or our hardline drawing layer, is set to 100% opacity, which means it'll be fully dark, fully black. Now we're going to go ahead and use the pencil tool on this drawing. So I'm going to kind of combine some of the uh, steps that I had been talking about, some of the time-saving techniques while I'm drawing this picture. Uh, most of the time-saving techniques include using the various marquee tools that are on this page. Now there's the uh, rectangular marquee, I've got the elliptical marquee, uh, I've got the polygonal lasso. All of these marquee types are going to be helpful in drawing our drawing. So let's talk about just hardlining the drawing. Now one of the techniques I use when I draw is I go ahead and I select the pencil tool. Um, I can change the brush, but again I'm going to use the default brush here. And I usually like to draw, especially when I get a little more detailed, with four to five pixels. Uh, it's a nice tight drawing. It depends how big the drawing is. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is just kind of start um, darkening the lines along the sketch that I drew. So I'm going to zoom in and just start tracing the lines to get the character down. Now you can see that on the size, the size of the character I drew on the page, the lines are very thin. So I want to thicken those up because we're also going to talk about line weights. Uh, line weights are very important when you're drawing and I actually did a video on the importance of line weights which you should check out. It's going to be linked in the description below or at the end of this video. So go ahead and check that out. But What I usually do is incorporate line weights with a drawing uh, while I'm actually doing the drawing. Not, not something that I apply later, although you can if you want to improve some things. We're going to start with a heavier line then. So I'm going to increase our pixels to 10 while I'm drawing and go ahead and start filling that in. Now again, even though my lines are not going to be perfect and sketchy here, we will refine them as we go along. Because what I'm just trying to do is get the character down. The original sketch layer just outlines the character, gets that down on paper. Now I can go ahead and start completing the drawing and getting the nice hard dark lines in. And because we're using the pencil tool, if we zoom in on that, you can see that it's very sharp. There's no grays. There's no grays. It doesn't. It doesn't have a gradient to the line like the like the pencil, like the paintbrush uh, tool does. And there's also you can, also a good tool to keep in mind that you're going to be using frequently is the eraser tool. You can select the uh, brush, which gives you a much fuzzier line. For the hard lines, we're going to be using the pencil tool because we want really sharp, crisp lines. So we're going to get that down a little bit. So we're using about a six pixel eraser brush and using a 10 pixel. We're going to reduce this down because we're going to start getting into detail now. So I'm going to go five pixels here and this is where I'm going to start refining. I'm going to constantly shift back and forth between the pencil tool and the eraser tool because that's how we're going to refine the drawing. Now we're going to get into some of the time-saving techniques that I talked about and I use this specifically on this character because of the various shapes that he is. For instance, you notice that his head is basically an ellipse. So I'm going to go ahead and use the elliptical marquee and create his head. Once I select the shape I want, I can go ahead and modify that. I can free transform the selection. And because I have the sketch underneath, I can modify it to what I need it to be. And that means adjusting the shape and the size of the ellipse. I love using this tool because now once we have that shape in place, and I can again move it around as I need to, I can just add a stroke to it. And we're going to select a stroke with, uh, let's say, eight pixels and see how that looks. That's a pretty good line. I'm also going to go ahead and create a new layer. And the reason you're going to want to create multiple layers is because sometimes you're going to be drawing something that overlaps something else, and you don't want to mess up the original line. You can always remerge these lines together later once they're finalized. But in this case, I'm going to go ahead and modify the selection here and I'm going to go ahead and use the stroke tool again and I'm going to go to a much thinner line and that basically 
basically Prox's head is two saucers placed together. So there's gonna be a line that separates them. Now, because I created a separate layer for this element, I can go ahead now and just erase the rest of the line without erasing the original line. So now I've got a really nice fine line there. Now I can also copy this line to get his visor, what Prox uses to see, and I can just copy. So I do this constantly when I'm drawing to save time. So this is one of the time-saving techniques, using the marquee tool, using the copy tool, so I don't have to draw everything from scratch every single time. So the marquee tools will become your best friend. They're gonna give you nice crisp lines, they're gonna give you nice accurate shapes, and it lets you see what it's gonna look like before you even do the stroke. I'm also gonna use the polygonal marquee tool to draw straight lines. Instead of having to draw a straight line, I can now see where that's gonna be and just fill it in. I can also reverse the marquee tool and erase what's not necessary without destroying the rest of the picture. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing over here on this side. Zoom in here and we're gonna fill that in. Now you will notice that when you do use the marquee tool, you do get some gradient along the line. But that's okay. You still, when you're zoomed out, get a nice accurate lines. Now, because that's finished, I can go ahead and select these two layers and merge them, merge them together. And if I want, I can also use the marquee tool to fill in areas that are black. So I've highlighted this area. Now I can go ahead and use the paint bucket. Tapping it a couple times will fill in all the black and now I've got a nice black visor there. Now going back to drawing some of the lines, again, I'm just filling in the black lines here and we're applying line weights as we go along. And even though these lines don't look crisp, I'm gonna go back and clean them up after I get the drawing a little further along. It is actually hard to get nice tight lines. That's why I use the tools because drawing this ellipse by hand would have been challenging. Again, I'm gonna create another ellipse for the shoulder piece here using the elliptical marquee. I'm gonna transform it to get it at the right angle that I want and adjust it as needed. And again, we're gonna use the stroke tool. Let's go ahead and use a thicker line. Now again, because we created another layer, I can go ahead and erase the part that's behind. I'm going to also do the same thing with the sockets at the shoulders. You can change your aspect to a fixed ratio or a fixed size. I'm going to change it to a fixed ratio because I want an actually a perfect circle here. And we're going to do another stroke. We're going to go down to 10 this time. I'm going to take this one over here on the other side. I'm going to actually shrink this circle a little bit. So I'm going to transform the selection because it's on the other side. It's a little smaller and we're gonna do the stroke tool there. Now I can go ahead and erase anything that wouldn't be seen. So make sure you deselect after you're done using the marquee or else you won't be able to erase anything unless it's in the marquee. I'm gonna go ahead and create another small circle here because the elbow joint is also a little sphere. And then I'm gonna use the polygonal marquee to connect the dots. Now I'm gonna actually move this down a little bit because I think it's a little too close to the shoulder. I love being able to just move pieces around in Photoshop and just get things in the exact spot you want. If you drew them in the wrong place the first time. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect these using the polygonal marquee and I just fill them in with the paint bucket. And now I've got a nice straight line connecting those two areas, showing the bicep part of the arm. And you'll notice I'm varying the line thickness as I go up. That's just to give the line weight that I've been talking about. Again, check out my importance of line weights video, which will be linked in the description below. And we're just gonna keep going around the drawing and finishing it. I will skip around so you don't have to watch me draw the entire thing. We'll get this done quicker. So here we are with uh, more of the drawing completed. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the sketch layer. So we just have our black lines. Now again, the sketch layer served its purpose as just being the underlay to kind of outline where the character is. Now we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna clean up the rest of this drawing to finalize it. Again, some of the lines are really sketchy still but I want some nice hard lines and, and I want to go ahead and add in the details. So I'm going to go ahead and speed through that and come back at the end to just kind of explain some of the things that we did. Okay, so I went ahead and cleaned up the rest of the drawing. This is the final drawing, the final line work. You can see a lot, everything's a lot crisper and cleaner and using all the techniques that I talked about, you know, again, using the marquee tools 
is a great time saving technique when you're drawing on a tablet, when you're drawing with Photoshop, because you, you can get cleaner, crisper lines, more accurate lines, and especially when you're doing things like ellipses and circles, um, it's those are great tools to use. Uh, I, I always I never look at it as cheating. I look at it as, you know, if I was using a straight edge, if I was drawing on paper and using a straight edge or a circle template or an ellipse template, uh, I come from an architecture world, so I use those tools all the time. So um, I, it's just the program gives you those features. There's no reason not to use them. Uh, again, they do save time and they do help your drawing look cleaner and crisper and better. So that's it for this video. Hope you found it helpful to run through an example on how to draw with Photoshop elements on a drawing tablet. Again, that translates to Photoshop as well. If you have any questions or comments on anything that I talked about in this video, go ahead and put those in the comment section below. There's a link in the description box to the line weight video that I talked about earlier. And don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more Photoshop and drawing and art videos, which is what we do here. So again, thanks for watching. We will see you next time. Have a great day.